Okay, so in this video, we're going to be going through a very simple state flow program in which you take a sine wave over here, you put it through a state flow chart, and then you read the output on the scope. So if we take a look at this output here, run the simulation, and see here. As you can see, we've got at the top there the sine wave going through, and at the bottom, we've got a square wave. So I'm actually following the MATLAB website here. They've got a tutorial here called Getting Started with State Flow. I recommend watching it. It's three and a half minutes long. The reason why I'm doing this video is to expand on this because they skip over a lot in this. And for a beginner, it gets very confusing very quickly. So um, I'm going to leave a link to this in the description and then also their whole, in general, Getting Started block of videos that they have on their website, which again, I'll leave a link to in the description. Okay, so the link will be in the description. The so first things first, let's close out all of this. All right, so I'm going to show you from the beginning just because even setting up MATLAB can be a bit of a pain. So let's go to our search MATLAB and then open it. It shouldn't matter what version you've got. I've got the August 2020 version, but it's pretty much the same since like 2012. So, okay, so when you open up MATLAB, it can be a little bit intimidating. We're going to go come up to the top here and click Simulink. Let that open. So on this bit here, you've got a variety of different options. Best thing to do is to go to the search and type in state flow. And that gives you a whole bunch of different state flow models. So you can choose pretty much any one of them depending on what you're doing. But for this video, we're gonna do blank chart. So we can minimize MATLAB now. And then now we just have state flow open. So a bit confusing, but state flow exists inside MATLAB. So. All right, so the thing to note here is that we're currently in chart. And so if you look up here, we have, here we have Simulink which is what we're going to be using. I'm just zooming in with the scrolling bot, the mouse wheel, by the way, yeah? So you can zoom in using the mouse wheel and then you click down the mouse wheel, you can pan around. Important point there. Um, all right, so here we're inside Simulink and then we go into our state flow via chart, right? So this is where we're going to make our state flow. Let's go back to Simulink first of all. So here we have our state flow, our state diagram here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put the sine wave here to the left of the state flow um, state diagram and then on the right we're going to put our scope our oscilloscope for us to look at the output right and then inside there we're going to put our state diagram so let's come up to li library browser here and then so for me sine wave comes up straight away because i searched for it previously but let's just go back what you would see something like this okay so when you open when you open up the library browser you're going to see this Come up to the search term, type in sine wave, hit enter. You've got sine wave function, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for sine wave. You've got sine wave here, and then we just drag onto the canvas, move it to here, and then we can just connect them like that. And if you want to, we can edit the sine wave settings by just double clicking on it, and then we could, for example, change our frequency to you know, 50 per second. We can do amplitude to you know, 10 amps, 10 volts, doesn't really matter. And so we've got that part. So we've got the sine wave, we've got our state flow, and then now let's have our output, which is going to be our scope. Back up to library browser, into the search again, type in scope, hit enter. And here you've got a uh, scope. You just drag that to here. Now you can connect them together. Okay, now, so here we've only got one input to our scope. So what we can do is we can click on scope. Up at the top here, it gives us our scope settings. And then now you've got number of ports. Make that two. So currently right now on our scope, all we can see, right, is all we can see is our output. So we want to compare our output to our input. So we make the scope a bit bigger, right? And then we can do this. There we go. So now we've got the sine wave going into the first port of our scope and we've got our output of our state flow going into our second port, right? Make this a bit bigger just to make it look a bit better with all of the data, make everything just cool. Okay, so now we've got a sine wave going into a state diagram, right? And then the output going into an oscilloscope and the sine wave going into the oscilloscope as well. Okay, so now we need to do our state diagram. So here we've got our input as data, 
and our output is data one. Let's just change the name. So if we click into the, the state diagram, change the name of our data, we'll change it to input and then change data two to our output. So if we come back over here to our Simulink, now you can see we've got input and output. Let's go into our state diagram now, and then now let's create two states. We're going to call one on, one off. So if we go over to here, so I'm just zooming in now with my scroll wheel again. So we'll call this one on, and we're going to say that what happens when this one goes on, we're going to make not x is equal to zero, we're going to make our output equal to one. What this arrow here means is that it's a uh, the default state so when the program starts it will start in this state and then so go over to here make our second state pull it off and then we're going to make our output we're going to make it equal to minus one so what we're saying here now is that when that sine wave is coming into this state diagram right we want at a certain state the output to be one right so we're going to output a one a digital logic one at a certain state we're going to output a digital logic minus one this is how, how we're going to create our square wave so how do we transition between the two we just take our little like cursor on the side here make an arrow to this one so we're going to go from on to off we're going to do that we're going to go from on to off when our input is less than zero okay and then we're going to go from off to on when our input is greater than zero. So that's our two conditions there. Okay, so now we're ready. If we come back to our Simulink diagram here, it's always best to just save it. MATLAB just has some issues. So if we just go to just click save, and then when, whenever you're saving, just be aware as well, not to put spaces in the file name. It just doesn't like it. So Let's go with sign to square. Yes, save sign to square. All right, so you run the simulation and then double click on the scope and you get a very ugly sine wave. Uh, okay, I've made a mistake here. Let's go into sine wave settings. So, frequency is set in radians per second so i've set it to 50 radians per second now one radian per second is equal to one over two pi hertz so that's i was meant to put 50 hertz there but i put 50 radians per second so one hertz is equal to two pi radians so 50 hertz is 314 radians right about 314 315 so now when I do that and then click run, there you go. Okay. So now I need to change my simulation settings. Let's come up here to stop time and let's make the stop stop time. Instead of making it 10, make it a thousand and run again. Now if we double click, there we go. We've got more of a sine wave. And then when you come up here, in your zoom one if you click on the horizontal zoom and then just select a couple waves and there you can see so we've got a nice smooth sine wave at 50 hertz and you can see it's given us our square wave output now this isn't really that clear but what you can do is you can come up here to layout the view layout right so layout and then you can just select like this so for example depending on how many signals you had you could select that for example and it show you four different signals so here we've only got two signals so we're going to go to two like that and then we can even go to style and we can change this to white this to white meaning the backgrounds right click apply now you've got a white background and then you can change the thickness of the line so two so this is our sine wave signal so let's assume that it's voltage we'll make it red apply and then we come up here active display click two 
and then now we've got our square wave and select thickness two and we can make it blue for digital there you go apply now if we wanted the square wave to match the sine wave in its amplitude instead of making the output one when it's on we can make it 10 instead of making the output minus one we can make it minus 10 come back over here click run now we click on the scope again and as you can see there we go we've got a nice sine wave coming in from the input and the output is a nice square wave select a bit there you go and as you can see here here's the zero axis and you can see it dropping to minus 10 and it stays at minus 10 whilst the sine wave's below zero and then shoots back up to 10 once the sine wave crosses the zero axis there. and that's it that's how you create a nice beautiful sine to square wave little simulation in, in state flow and simulink cool guys thanks for watching and i shall see you in the next one peace